Hello, welcome to the Mindful Life Practice. My name is Alex. I'm gonna be leading you through a 40 minute session today called Letting Go in Order to Receive. The Mindful Life Practice. So we're going to start our practice down on our spines. You can choose how you set up your legs here. You can have your soles of the feet on the mat, feet wide, knees knocking together. Also might be nice to lengthen the legs long on the mat, ground the heels, relax the toes. Or I really like to place my soles of the feet on the mat, drop the knees open, and then you can place the palms on the navel. You can also place them on the thighs, or you can lift them overhead, gripping opposite elbows. Find yourself settling into stillness, settling into your space and your shape and your practice. So the first time I ever remember experiencing this theme, letting go in order to receive, in a profound way was when I moved to Kuwait for the first time at age 23. And before that, I had a childhood bedroom that was full of stuff. It was full of photographs and old toys and memories and movie tickets. And when I moved to Kuwait, for the first time, I couldn't take everything with me, right? I could only fit like two suitcases on the plane. And in this process of going through all of my belongings and picking out the most important things and leaving the rest behind, I experienced this profound spaciousness and lightness when I moved into my new apartment with so little things. And I saw how when we let go of things, what we receive from this process can be beautiful. So in the Yoga Sutras, the Yamas and Niyamas are all about letting go. Aparigraha is about non-hoarding. Ahimsa is letting go of our practices of non Varagya is the Sanskrit term for letting go. So in asana, which is our yoga postures, we're constantly in this process of letting go. And we find the balance of letting go of effort in order to find ease, letting go of movement in order to find stillness. So we'll move through a practice today that's centered around this theme, letting go in order to receive. We are so go, go, go in our lives, we move from one place to the next. Many of us have jumped back into our hectic work schedules. I want you to see if you can let go of this. Let go of the action it took to set yourself up for this practice, to find time to lie out your yoga mat, start to receive the energy of being here. Let go of the choosing energy Rest in a moment. Receive the steadiness and the stillness of this moment. Let go of your exhale, receive your inhale. Let it fill to the bottom of the torso before you exhale and empty and release. Receive your next inhale. This time, let your breath fill the rib cage, and then exhale, empty and release. Let's just take a few more rounds of breath in whatever grounding shape you are in. And if your knees have opened wide, draw them into a close. Take the knees together, bring yourself into a tight little ball, rock from side to side. Rock the palms to the backs of the thighs and 
Just make your way up to stand. Standing at your mat, we're going to start by moving a lot. So I want you to move in a way that feels good, maybe rocking from side to side. Don't really worry about what it looks like, it doesn't matter. You're in your house, <laughs> that's the beauty of it, so no one can see what it looks like. So just do what feels good. I am a first grade teacher, and the funny thing about first graders is that they often will just be moving like this, <laughs> standing or walking in the line. They literally just listen to their intuition and they do what their body tells them to do. So I want you to see if you can try to channel that energy. Let's take it for one more breath. And then find yourself in stillness. Let go of movement, receive stillness. My teacher, Rolf Gates, he says, imagine that your torso is like a glass of water and it's been stirred up with sand. And then as you find stillness, the sand settles, water clears. Sand begins to settle and the water clears. Walk to the front of the mat if you're not already there. Take an inhale, lift both palms up towards the sky, find your upward mountain. Exhale to sigh into a fold. Breathe your halfway lift. Exhale to lower back down. Press through the soles of the feet, inhale, lift the palms all the way up. Exhale the palms to heart center. Two more, take an inhale, take an exhale, find your inhale, release on your exhale, inhale, press through both feet, lift all the way up to stand. One more, take a breath in, start to move with your own breath, it's okay if you mess it up. palms into heart center. Find stillness and I'd like you to acknowledge your intention. Our theme of this practice is letting go in order to receive. Maybe acknowledging something that you would like to let go of. Finish this sentence, I would be lighter if I let go of. What would it be like if you let go of that thing? Release the palms by the side. Take an inhale, lift up half, or upward mountain. Exhale into your fold. Breathe your halfway lift, we'll add on here. So exhale, keep your right foot forward, step your left foot all the way back on your mat. Find your low lunge. Take an inhale, lift your palms up. This is called your Anjaniyasana. And then exhale, place your palms onto the mat. Inhale your right palm up towards the sky. This is your twisted low lunge. And then exhale your right palm back down. Now we're gonna walk into a hamstring stretch. So you're gonna walk the palms back, lengthen through the right leg. If you can't quite reach the ground, you can take your blocks. I should have made them closer for me to reach at the start of the practice. But you can take blocks and place them underneath your hands. If you don't have yoga blocks at your house, I have used um, books before in the place of blocks. So you can use books, okay? I think we have this assumption or this belief that blocks are for beginners and we like to avoid using them. Blocks are our friends, okay? Blocks are for everyone. So don't 
reach and, and hurt yourself because you think that it's not cool to use a block. It's not true. So walk the palms forward, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, draw the navel in so you're finding yourself in your plank, you're engaging the core. Hold your plank for five, four, three, two, and then for our first vinyasa, I always take it slow. Let's land the knees onto the mat, slowly lower all the way down. Inhale up into a back bend. Exhale to lower back down, push through your tabletop, come to your down dog. So we have the right foot forward that time. We're gonna take the left foot forward this time. So inhale your left foot all the way up towards the sky, big stretch through your right calf, stretch through your left hip. Draw the left knee in, step the left foot between the palms, land onto the right knee. So I forgot to mention this earlier. If you have sensitive kneecaps, you can always place a pillow or a blanket or something underneath that knee, okay? See if you can make this your most intense Anjani Asana, so strong and intentional through the arms. And then let go of some of that intensity and receive spaciousness. Take your in-breath. On your out-breath, you hinge, you anchor through the right palm, you twist towards the left knee. So you're twisting towards the leg that is forward. Make this your strongest twist. And then relax and make it your easiest twist. Can you find the middle between strength and ease? Release the left palm back down. Walk the fingertips back. Lengthen over the left leg. Ha Hanumanasana. Inhale. And then exhale. Two more breaths. palms forward, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step the right foot forward to meet the left, find your forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift, lengthen through the spine, reach through the crown of the head, exhale back into your fold, wiggle the toe mounds together, bend through the knees, sit the hips back, lift into your chair, your Utkatasana, everyone's favorite, favorite pose. <laughs> find the middle. Make this your strongest, most intense pose and then make it your easiest. And can you find the middle ground, like the Goldilocks position? Three, two, one, breath in, breath out, palms together. Let go of the intensity. Receive ease. Let go of effort, receive ease. Let's take that warm up flow on the opposite side. Take a breath in, lift both palms up. Exhale back into your fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to lower. This time you'll step the right foot back, land onto the right knee. Now, if you practice with me regularly in person, inhale. Exhale, open arms into goalpost arms. Weave the right arm underneath the left. So we're coming into an eagle arm. You can grip opposite shoulders or weave the forearms together. So what I was saying earlier was if you practice with me in person, you know that I often mix up my lefts and my rights. <laughs> so prepare for that. I usually catch and correct myself. So it should be okay today. But that's one of my shortfalls as a yogi, as a yoga teacher. Let's unwind and peel both arms up towards the sky. And then exhale to hinge forward. Keep your right palm where it is. Take your left palm up towards the sky. Option one, stay in your twist here. Option two, left palm on the sacrum. Option three, grab hold of the left foot and take this into a quad stretch twist. Part of 
Your yoga practice is learning how to tap into your intuition and do what feels good. I think sometimes we see these yogis doing these crazy poses, release that right foot, and we think that that's what yoga is about. Walk the fingertips back, find your hamstring stretch, but really yoga is not about the poses. It is simply a vehicle for exploring ourselves and learning more about ourselves. So when I give you lots of options, don't feel like you have to do the most advanced one because that's how you hurt yourself. You are not any less of a yogi if you're doing option one than you are if you're doing option three. So really honor yourself and your body and where you're at. So walk the palms forward, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step the left foot back to meet the right. Now, if you're a regular yogi, I'm gonna invite you to take your vinyasa with your knees lifted. If you're not a regular yogi, please take the knees down. We're building our muscle strength and being honest with, our, with where we're at. Okay, so knees down, slowly lower the elbows back and you should feel the strength building in your arms. Okay, so this variation is just as valuable as the more advanced one. Inhale up into your back bend. Exhale to lower. And then push through your table, down dog. Right foot up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Draw the left, right knee in, step the right foot between the palms, land onto the left knee. Anjaniyasana, inhale, open the arms, goal post arms, eagle arms on the opposite side. We're weaving the left arm under, hooking the arms together, and now either you're just here pulling the shoulder blades apart, that's okay, or you weave the arms together and make that connection. Draw the needle in, support the spine, linger for three, for two, on one, take your breath in, expand everything, lift. Exhale, hinge forward. Find your twist so your left palm stays grounded. Your right palm moves up towards the sky. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're here or maybe you are here. Release the left foot, take the right palm forward. Let's walk the fingertips back, lengthen over the right leg. Three rounds of breath, inhale, create space. Exhale, move into that space. Walk the palms forward, bend through the right knee, tuck the left toes and lift the left knee. Step the left foot forward to meet the right. Take your inhale to halfway lift. Exhale to lower. Find your strong chair. Step the feet together. Bend through the knees. Sit the hips back. Lift up. Make this your most intense chair. Let go of that intensity. Create space and ease. How does that feel? Can you find the middle between these two elements? So the element of strength and fire, and then the element of ease and surrender. Press through the feet, lift all the way up. Take your palms into heart center. Take an inhale, lift up. Exhale to fold. We're going to move through a mandala flow today. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to lower. Step all the way back to a down dog. If you would like to take a vinyasa between sides, feel free to take a vinyasa between sides. Inhale the right foot up towards the sky. Draw the right knee in. Step the right foot between the palms. If your hand doesn't quite get there, you can step it forward. Now this time we're going to land onto the left heel and windmill all the way up to what's called your warrior two. 
So your arms are making one long line from right fingertips all the way to left. And as the body finds the middle, the mind finds the moment. As you inhale, reverse the warrior. And then exhale back up to your warrior two. Take three more, moving with your own breath. Can you move like water and end like fire? One more. Come all the way back up to your warrior two. Lengthen through your right leg. Hinge at the hips, reach forward, forward, forward. Right arm comes alongside the right leg. Lift up the left arm, wow. <laughs> I am in Abu Dhabi right now where it never ever rains. And I just noticed when I looked out the window that it's raining, which is like a miracle. Shift, oh sorry, so option one, I got distracted. You can stay here in your triangle. Option two, you might want to try a balance by lifting into your half moon. I like to take my block for this and land my right fingertips on my block. Wow, the rain is so beautiful. It so rarely rains here. And it's funny how living somewhere like the desert helps you shift your perspective and appreciate these things, right? I grew up in Canada and when it rained, we would be like, oh, it's raining. And when it rains in Abu Dhabi, people celebrate it. Bend through the right knee, step the left foot back. Turn all 10 toes so that they're facing the side wall. As you inhale, spread through the fingers, reach through the arms, and then exhale to hinge forward. You're finding yourself in a wide-legged forward fold. Centralize your right palm on the mat. Inhale your left palm up towards the sky. And then exhale the left palm back down, opposite side. Inhale. And then exhale. Take one more of each. Maybe you wrap the arm around and hook it near the hip. Slowly unwind, opposite side. Release the palm. Press the palms onto the hips. Make your way up to stand. Turn the left toes to face the back of the room. So we are circling around the mat. So you should be facing the opposite direction now. Step off of your back heel so you find yourself in a crescent lunge. And either keep your palms on your hips or place the palms at our center. Maybe you reach them overhead. We're going to lift off of the back foot and bring yourself into warrior three. If your balance feels like it's not there today, you can support yourself with hands on the ground, hands on a block. Remember that every day is different. Find the middle. Strength and surrender. And as the body finds the middle, the mind finds the moment. Is there wisdom in the middle? Is there wisdom in the present moment? Tilt your way up to stand. Step your right foot in, in front of your left foot. Take an inhale, lift your palms up. As you exhale, I want you to hinge forward. So you're bending through the right knee. You should feel a deep stretch through the left calf. Roll up to stand. Lift onto your tippy toes. Do a little swivel. Okay, reach your arms out in front of you. Bend through the knees, slowly lower. Five, four, three, two. And then on one, press up. Five, four, three, two, one. Land go, land go, let go, land the key feet. Land the palms, take a big inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. 
let go in order to receive. Step the left foot long on the mat, turn the left toes to the front of the room, warrior two, inhale, reverse the warrior, breathe into the left rib cage, exhale your way back up, windmill palms to the mat, press through the palms, step the left foot back, so maybe you keep the left toes floating here, and you move through your vinyasa with one foot on the ground. Maybe you're just like, no thank you. <laughs> you take a regular vinyasa. Maybe you shift right back to down dog. This is your practice. You live in your body so you know what feels better than I do. All right, let's move through that flow on the opposite side. Left foot lifts up towards the sky, three like a dog. Draw the left knee in. Step the left foot between the palms, land onto the right foot, lift all the way up into your warrior two. In yoga, we have the drishti point, and the drishti point means the gaze or the focal point. So I want you to settle your gaze and your focus over the left fingertips. Move like water, reverse the warrior, and like fire. Three more. One more. Plank through the left leg. Hinge forward, find your trikonasana, your triangle pose. Now if you want to stay here, stay here. Or if you want to lift off, find your half moon, that is another option. Is there wisdom in the middle? Is there wisdom in the present moment? Step the right foot back, lift all the way up, take your big inhale, exhale to fold forward. Couple of options in your forward fold this time. You can just choose your favorite arm variation. So it could be like this, could be like this, could just be dangling, or you might like to Take your twists. It's up to you and what feels good. Take one more breath. Press through the feet, gently roll up to stand. Take your palms on your hips, turn your right toes to face the back wall. We're finding the warrior three on this side. So hands can be anchored on the hips. They can be at heart center, lifting up overhead, however you like to take this shape. Start to trust weight onto your right foot and know that it's okay if you fall. Falling out of a shape is what makes you human. Getting back into it is what makes you a student of yoga. Tilt up to stand, cross the left ankle in front of the right, take your inhale, reach your palms up, and then exhale, hinge forward. So this should be a nice stretch over the right calf. Slowly roll all the way up to stand. Take your palms up overhead, do your little swivel. Reach your palms out <laughs> at shoulder height. Stay off of the heels. Slowly, slowly bend at the knees lower. Five, four, three, two, and then one. Can you press through the feet, lift all the way back up to stand? 
land the palms, land the heels, take your big breath in, exhale through the mouth, let go of movement, receive stillness. Step your right foot long on the mat, turn your right toes to face the front of the room, bend through the right knee. As you inhale, reverse the warrior. And then exhale to windmill, palms to the mat. Okay, your choice, you can just simply step back. Maybe you take that one-footed vinyasa. Whatever feels good. Make your way back to your down dog. Set the knees forward. Tuck the toes, just sit back on the heels for a moment. So we're gonna take an Ustrasana, a camel pose. And it can be nice to have a block if you have one between the feet. You don't need one, just an option. Place the palms onto the backs of the hips. Slowly start lowering your heart down, draw the navel in to support the spine. Now maybe you reach your palms to the backs of the heels. Maybe you have your block and your hand is on your block. Please, when you do this pose, try to tuck the chin. It's called Jalandhara Bandha. Connects your chin with your chest. Okay, if you fling it back, I see different students of yoga doing, flinging their necks back. You can do that. It's not wrong. I just am of the belief that it's not good for your cervical spine. Our cervical spine is really narrow, right? And it's not really designed to hold like our heavy brains. <laughs> Holds them upright but not backwards. Take the palms onto the hips, slowly lift all the way back up. Sit the hips onto the heels. Take a breath in and then a breath out. So we're gonna move into a pigeon pose. And how you're gonna take your pigeon as you are going to, just turn this way so you can see me, tuck the toes, lift up into a down dog, draw the right knee up, and then take your right shin and lay it across the width of the mat. So you're taking your right knee behind your right wrist, you're wiggling your left knee back. If your right knee is floating high up, you can prop it underneath a block. If your knees are like screaming out in pain and this does not feel good, then don't do it. You can lie back, cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh, flex the foot. You can take pigeon in this way, okay? Just a different variation for the pose. You're upright in your pigeon. Slowly lower all the way down. And maybe you bring a block underneath the hip or a block underneath the So I told you at the start of our practice today about this tendency that I was born with, which was this tendency to hold on. And I think many of us are born with this tendency, right? When given the choice, we want to hold on to things rather than let go of them. And I talked about how as a kid growing up, I had all of this stuff in my house. I had photos, I had toys, I had, you know, movie programs and tickets and all of these things that I thought were so valuable that I had trouble letting go. When I finally let go, when I finally got rid of so much of that stuff and I moved into my empty apartment in Kuwait for the first time, I saw how healing it can be to let go of things. How would it feel to let go of some of the things that you're holding on to? Slowly lift all the way up. Come into your pigeon on the opposite side. If you want to take a vinyasa between sides, feel free. And then set up with your left knee behind the left wrist. Wiggle your right toes back, land right onto the right knee. And then slowly lower down. So on a deeper note, if you follow me on Instagram, um, you probably know that the largest way 
this theme has been a part of my life has been over the past seven months when I quit drinking alcohol. And I was holding on to alcohol so tightly before because I felt like it was important to my social life and it was part of my family life I grew up with. And I didn't know what adult life would be like without alcohol. I was scared to let it go. And it was hard at the beginning and I didn't know what my life would be like without it. But what I have received from my life putting alcohol is the beauty of being sober. Every sunrise is more beautiful. My body felt like it's 10 years younger. I became a life coach, a bar instructor, a spinning instructor. I was so scared of letting go. But what I ended up receiving from it was something so much more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. go in order to escape. Slowly roll your way up. Just come to land on the hips. Roll the spine all the way down. Open the arms into cactus arm. Take the knees over to the right. Send your gaze over to the left. Life practice. 
Thank you guys so much for joining and practicing with me today. If you enjoyed that practice, please subscribe to the Mindful Life Practice. Follow me on Instagram, Alex McGrobs and the Mindful Life Practice. Share this practice with anyone you think would enjoy it. Hope to see you again. Namaste.